Hi everyone, welcome to part 3. Okay, Kramnik has just played king d3. And Van Whaley continued with bishop e7, so applying pressure to the c5 pawn here in conjunction with the knight. Knight a4 is what Kramnik played, which of course couldn't have been played if the game had gone down that line that Fritz gave instead of knight a4, knight b5. So. This is one of the things that Kramnik was concerned about and why he didn't play that knight b5 line. Because as I said before, he doesn't want to play c6 because this weakens uh, d6 permanently and um, it makes it much easier for black to blockade. And white can't now save the pawn anyway by playing c6 or a3 is falling. And then Willie continued with king g5. Now came king c4, further king centralization and helping out with the protection of these pawns here and the potential queening of them. As Capablanca said, the handling of the king is crucial for endgame success. And white has a decent edge here and it was made even more so because Van Whaley played an inferior move with bishop takes c5. Although, you know, he's going to have to give up material to stop the pawns. This is the wrong time to do it, and he's judged the resulting position poorly. Better was king f6, although white still has a significant edge. So bishop takes c5, now knight a takes c5, and now another bad move from Van Whaley. Knight takes c5. Presumably, he thought that he'd be able to hold the position, a pawn down, or perhaps a queen his f pawn, which is what his plan seemed to be. But now white is easily winning. Better was knight b8, although white has a big edge now, and it will only be a matter of time to force the loss of material for black, queen a pawn, and deliver mate. So knight takes c5 anyway, and now king takes c5 which is much better than knight takes c5 because it limits the movement of the knight here at c8 and as I said white is now winning with an advantage of close to three pawns and if left to think for long enough now Fritz would see that it's a force mate in probably 25 moves at the most I would say so it's completely winning and king g4 is what Van Wader played, it's going after the g pawn, which is obviously his plan when he played these exchanges, but as I said, there was a weak continuation, show bad judgment. So now d6 from Kramnik, forcing knight b6, so if d7, there's knight takes d7, but now comes king c6, defending d7, and now king g3, still going for counterplay by queening the f pawn but as always Kramnik has judged the position excellently because now comes knight c5 and white is winning even after king takes g2 because now we have the forcing line d7 knight takes d7 knight takes d7 now f3 and it appears white may be in trouble but Kramnik has a winning plan of course and if you want to try and spot it then stop the video now knight takes e5 is the first move threatening to take on f3 and if king takes f3 then king d5 and is marching this pawn and that's a quick win so black play is f2 but now knight g4 is uh, the only move that Fritz gave an exclamation mark in the entire game and here Van Whaley resigned and the point of course is that there's no f1 and queening the pawn because of knight e3 check and after the black king moves, knight takes f1 and white will queen one of his pawns before long and win easily. So a very nice continuation by Kramnik. And one way out of this that comes into consideration is an under promotion. After knight g4, f1 and promoting to a knight instead and perhaps hoping for a draw somehow. But now white simply plays e5. You know, the, the idea of under promoting is so there's no knight e3 check. But after e5, there's no way to stop the e pawn from queening, and as before, white will win easily. So that's it anyway. A great game from Kramnik that showed his end game prowess and excellent overall positional judgment. The next round starts at 12.30 today, Greenwich Mean Time. 
So I hope you enjoyed this game. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.